Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers trespassing, investigative detentions, and reasonable suspicion, and is brought to us by Free Press NC's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. In a video posted on January 14th, 2022, First Amendment auditor Free Press NC, who we will refer to as Mr. Press, conducted an audit in Burlington, North Carolina. After filming in Burlington City Hall and filing a public records request with no issues, he moved on to the Burlington Police Department and began to film police vehicles in the parking lot. Tires are mostly in good shape. Can't tell entirely, but they're generally speaking, they seem to be good tires. Hi! What are you doing? Just checking out my employees. What's up? What's your name, badge number? Delgado. Delgado, you have a badge number? I don't. Okay. What's your name? Uh, I'm not going to give that. So, what are you doing? Just checking on checking on the uh, Burlington employees and seeing if you guys are doing a great job. About you're keeping the, yeah. the cars? Yeah, I want to make sure you're keeping the officers safe with like good tires and you're not leaving out passwords to NCIC. What's that? You said I need to? Yes, sir. You're actually trespassing unless you actually have something. You want you want me to or I need to? It's hard. Do you have any business back here? This is only police personnel only. Yeah, you said I need to, so I was asking, do, do you want me to come talk to or did I have to? Am I being detained? Yes, sir. Just point, yes, sir. Okay, for suspicion of what crime? Okay, you're walking around taking pictures of police cars and so forth. You're you're not you don't have any business here. Is that illegal? Department. Is that illegal? It's only supposed to be police back here. And your name, badge number? I don't have a badge number, Sergeant Marsh. Sergeant Marsh, okay. So you said I'm detained. And I said suspicion of what crime? What are you doing back here? Suspicion of what crime? What's I'm your RAS? You, you need to leave, sir. What crime have I committed? You need to leave. If you'd like to stand on the sidewalk and do He told me I have doing. to come here and I'm detained. No, I so didn't say that. I didn't say that. You said we need you to come here and you I'm said I'm detained. Talk to you, so I need to talk to you. If you want to go over there take, on the sidewalk, take pictures, you're more than welcome, but you can't be back here. So the sign that says public entrance is not a public entrance. If you have, if you have public, if you have business here, yeah. Do you have business here? Am I required to answer that question? Okay, sir. At this point, you're being asked if you want to go over and take. I know I'm being asked because you don't want to infringe on my rights, which is why you've not ordered me to. But you still have me detained. Okay. Are you going to undetain me, or am I still detained? You're not detained. Okay. You're more than free, but you. Can do I can do what I want. Thanks. It's a public. Sir, you can go on the sidewalk and take pictures. You have to stay on the sidewalk. Here. Where's the sign that says it's authorized personnel only? There's actually a sign in here that says public parking right here. Sergeant Marsh informs Mr. Press that he's trespassing because only police officers are supposed to be in the parking lot. He originally informs Mr. Press that he's being detained, and later tells him that while he can take pictures from the sidewalk, he needs to leave the parking lot. Section 14-159.12 of the North Carolina General Statute states that, quote, A person commits the offense of first-degree trespass if, without authorization, he enters or remains on premises of another so enclosed or secured as to demonstrate clearly an intent to keep out intruders in a building of another or on the lands of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians after the person has been excluded by a resolution passed by the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indian Tribal Council. Because Mr. Press was in an open parking lot that was posted with a public parking sign, and not inside a building or on tribal land, he could not be convicted of first-degree trespassing. However, it is possible that a court could conclude that he was trespassing when he refused to leave the parking lot after Sergeant Marsh asked him to. According to Section 14-159.13 of the North Carolina General Statutes, quote, A person commits the offense of second-degree trespass if, without authorization, he enters or remains on premises of another after he has been notified not to enter or remain there by the owner, by a person in charge of the premises, by a lawful occupant, or by another authorized person. Or that are posted in a manner reasonably likely to come to the attention of intruders with notice not to enter the premises. In the 2022 case of State v. Han, the Court of Appeals of North Carolina held that an individual could be arrested for second-degree trespassing in a public space, such as a city sidewalk. The court reasoned that, quote, when the premises in question are open to the public, the occupants of those premises have the implied consent to be on the premises, and that consent can be revoked only upon some showing the occupants have committed acts sufficient to render the implied consent void. In the Han case, the defendant remained on a public sidewalk after a uniformed officer told him several Several times to quote unquote move along. While the defendant was ultimately acquitted of the trespassing charge, the court concluded that the officer had sufficient probable cause to effectuate the arrest. 
Applying this reasoning, it is possible that a court would conclude that Mr. Press trespassed on the public parking lot when he refused to leave. However, it should be noted that because the potential trespassing did not occur until after Sergeant Marsh told Mr. Press he was being detained, Mr. Press's initial detention could not be justified based on reasonable suspicion of trespassing. You tell me I'm detained in a public parking lot with no signs? That's bullcrap? Back off. Sir, sir, you need to understand. I don't need to do on. crap. You detained me for nothing. Sir, you need to leave the parking lot. This is Give me your supervisor. I am the supervisor. Give me your supervisor, the LT. This is bull crap. Adam, one of what? Notice I'm not talking to either of you guys oh, this yeah. way. I'm not, I'm not talking to either of you guys this way. I'm talking to him this way. I understand. You have no signs that say no trespassing, and it freaking says public entrance. You cannot detain me for videotaping. I didn't well, detain you. Why are you all in that car? I wasn't in a car. You, you if, you find, if you find I evidence of me being in a car, car, then bring me in and Raz and detain me and we'll talk. And that's why we that's why we started speaking with you because of that. Because you're you can't detain me to figure out if I committed yes, a crime. You're a freaking sergeant. Yes, yes, sir. We can. No, you cannot. Mr. Press tells Sergeant Marsh he cannot detain him to figure out if he committed a crime, arguing that he can only be detained if there is reasonable, articulable suspicion that he has committed a crime. However, this is a common misconception about the Terry Doctrine, which in fact recognizes the authority of police officers to detain individuals to investigate unusual conduct based on a reasonable, articulable suspicion that criminal activity may be afoot. As the Supreme Court explained in the 2000 case of Illinois v. Wardlow, quote, Even in Terry, the conduct justifying the stop was ambiguous and susceptible of an innocent explanation. The officer observed two individuals pacing back and forth in front of a store, peering into the window and periodically conferring. All of this conduct was by itself lawful, but it also suggested that the individuals were casing the store for a planned robbery. The court also noted that, quote, Terry recognized that the officers could detain individuals to resolve the ambiguity. In allowing such detentions, Terry accepts the risk that officers may stop innocent people. Indeed, the Fourth Amendment accepts that risk in connection with more drastic police action. Persons arrested and detained on probable cause to believe they have committed a crime may turn out to be innocent. The Terry stop is a far more minimal intrusion, simply allowing the officer to briefly investigate further. In the 2002 case of United States v. Arvizu, which dealt with similar concepts, the Supreme Court held that despite the fact that each of an officer's observations was by itself, quote, readily susceptible to an innocent explanation, an officer had reasonable suspicion to detain an individual under the totality of the circumstances. In reaching this conclusion, the court once again looked to the Terry case, explaining that, quote, the officer in Terry observed the petitioner and his companions repeatedly walk back and forth, look into a store window, and confer with one another. Although each of the series of acts was perhaps innocent in itself, we held that taken together, they warranted further investigation. It is clear from the Supreme Court's precedent that police officers do not violate the Fourth Amendment when they detain individuals engaged in suspicious activity that is not in and of itself criminal or illegal, as long as they have reasonable, articulable suspicion that criminal activity may be occurring. While it is unlikely that a court would conclude that Sergeant Marsh had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Press, as we will discuss later in this episode, Mr. Press's assertion that the officers cannot detain individuals to figure out if they have committed crimes is simply untrue, as that is the very purpose of an investigative detention. What was the RAS? Reasonable, articulable suspicion. If you're looking at vehicles, possibly breaking into a vehicle. I w did you suspect me of breaking into a vehicle? I did. Yes. The, the, the I asked him what he suspected me of, and he said filming. So I seen you, and I called my sergeant. And I was, and that's, how, See, that's why I got But out. that's what you need to articulate. You didn't do that until now. He was telling me that I was suspicious because I was filming around vehicles. But he doesn't get to detain me because I'm filming. I don't care how suspicious it looks. You will not get my name. I am not trespassing and I will not leave. You know, if you guys have signs up that says this is a trespassed area, authorized personnel only, you got gates up, of course I can't come in. Well, usually- He's making up laws. Like I was saying, usually it is. We only allow police cars and people back here, but due to the front lobby, people do come, public citizens. Right, they do come back which here. is why I'm here. Yeah, I understand. Try to be as reserved as I can. That you were like, hit, like looking all in the car. <laughs> okay. You told me that you have Raz that I was breaking and entering or p potentially committing a crime. Therefore, I'm not answering any of your questions. Am I being detained by you? No. 
Okay, thank you. Officer Delgado implies that the officers had reasonable suspicion to investigate Mr. Press because he was looking into the windows of the police vehicles. Courts have generally found that looking into the windows of parked vehicles on its own is insufficient to give officers the reasonable suspicion necessary to legally detain a citizen. For instance, in the 2012 case of United States versus Dell, the Tenth Circuit held that an officer did not have reasonable suspicion to detain an individual he observed peering into a car window with a female companion. The court concluded that, quote, this behavior is not enough to give rise to the level of suspicion required to justify detention. All that Officer Tafisi observed was lawful conduct, which, we are left to assume, he thought might be associated with other actions, either in the past or future, that might be illegal. The conduct was so innocuous and so very much in the realm of ordinary behavior that it would not lead a reasonable officer to suspect that a car break-in had occurred or was about to occur. Similarly, in the 2014 case of RR versus State, the 4th District Court of Appeal of Florida determined that an officer did not have reasonable suspicion of criminal activity to initially justify an investigatory stop on two juveniles who were walking around in a parking lot and looking into vehicles. In the 2001 case of State versus Srisavov, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Tennessee at Nashville concluded that reasonable suspicion did not exist when an officer detained an individual based on an uncorroborated anonymous tip that six to eight teenagers in baggy pants had been looking in the windows of cars parked in a hotel parking lot. However, when explaining its decision, the court noted that, quote, the anonymous informant, while perfectly justified in being suspicious of individuals looking into the windows of parked cars, did not actually see any criminal conduct. While the issue is close, it is our view that the totality of the circumstances did not warrant an investigatory stop. Because reasonable suspicion is a case-by-case -case determination based on the specific facts of the circumstance, it is impossible to predict with any certainty how a court would view this situation, and the fact that Mr. Press was looking into police vehicles could impact the court's analysis. However, given the way other similar cases have been decided, it seems likely that a court would conclude that the officers did not have reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Press. Probably a court's not going to care about a five minute detention, which is why there probably won't be anything from this unless you keep escalating. I'm not escalating anything. You are. You did. Here's, here's our lieutenant. Fantastic. What's going on, man? Howdy. I am, I was doing pretty good okay. until I met the sergeant. These two folks are incredibly professional. Good enough. He hasn't escalated a single thing. She said she had razzed me breaking into a freaking car. She was very polite at first. Once he escalated, she jumped on the bandwagon. But generally, they've been good. Okay. He is a train wreck. How you just treated me was a train wreck. I should say that. I don't know you, Sergeant Marsh, so I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. All right. Basically, I was told by Officer uh, Delgado that he was actually looking at vehicles, possibly breaking into cars. He didn't tell me that. He didn't say that's his Raz. I said, you got Raz, detain me. And he said, you're filming walking around cars. So let's go and remove him from the situation. Okay. Right? All right. Okay. So moving forward, how, how can we do something for you here? You can, you Allow can me to go you want in the back lot. Thank you. Know you. Know I mean? If you need paperwork, tell me what you need. We'll right. try to get it for you. They're going to close pretty soon. Understood. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm good to go. Huh? I'm just here to quietly exercise my rights and not be impeded okay. and not be detained. We good? We're, we're power to you. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Take care. Safe. Peace. Go, Keep it up, bro. After Lieutenant Beckmer informed Mr. Press that he was free to continue to film in the parking lot, Mr. Press requested the incident number from the police station regarding the incident. He then returned to City Hall to amend his public records request to include the incident number as well as information on Sergeant Marsh. It is unclear whether he intends to pursue any further action. Overall, Sergeant Marsh gets a C, because although he maintained a professional demeanor throughout the encounter and called Lieutenant Beckmer as soon as Mr. Press requested to speak with his supervisor, he demonstrated a fundamental misunderstanding of North Carolina's trespassing laws and reasonable articulable suspicion. While it is understandable why Sergeant Marsh and the other officers were suspicious of Mr. Press's behavior, there are many ways that Sergeant Marsh could investigate the situation without skipping straight to detaining him without reasonable suspicion to do so. For instance, Sergeant Marsh could have attempted to question Mr. Press consensually, and if he invoked his right to remain silent, he could have simply continued to observe Mr. Press's actions to see if he did anything that rose to the level of reasonable suspicion. This interaction demonstrates how officers can overstep the bounds of their authority when attempting to investigate unusual behavior they deem to be suspicious. And I would encourage Sergeant Marsh and other law enforcement officers to remember that investigative detention is only one of the tools they can use to determine whether someone is engaging in criminal activity. 
Mr. Press gets a B, because while he maintained a cordial demeanor and respectfully and forcefully asserted and defended his rights, he also demonstrated a fundamental misunderstanding of reasonable articulable suspicion in his assertions that he could not be detained for the officers to determine if he had committed a crime. This misinterpretation of the Terry Doctrine is somewhat prevalent in the First Amendment community, and when auditors perpetuate this mistaken belief, it causes further confusion about this already complex doctrine. Courts are generally more permissive than many people think when it comes to police detentions. And regardless of my personal beliefs about the legitimacy of these constitutional interpretations, I would encourage Mr. Press and other auditors to study the Supreme Court cases on this issue to achieve a better understanding of when they can and cannot be legally detained. Finally, Lieutenant Beckmer gets an A+, plus for maintaining a professional and friendly demeanor throughout the interaction, defending Mr. Press's right to film the public parking lot, and even offering assistance to support his free speech activities. I commend Lieutenant Beckmer for his willingness to professionally express his disagreement with Sergeant Marsh and do the right thing, instead of automatically backing the other officers involved in the incident, as we have seen many higher-ranking officers do in previous episodes of ATA. And I strongly encourage other law enforcement officers to learn from his example. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.